Hello and welcome. In this lecture, we've been talking a little bit about how we go from uh, understanding the research process, understanding how evidence is generated, and how to pull that evidence together, to talking a little bit more about how you can be an advocate to take that evidence and move it into changes in clinical practice. So first off, let's remind ourselves a little bit about how we go through the process of pursuing evidence-based practice. So first off, we have some sort of problem that we encounter, and we have to come up with questions that are good and useful for guiding our, ourselves towards actually making a change that's useful. So we need to create, create these clear questions. Then we go and try and seek evidence that can actually answer those questions. So we're looking at the literature, we're looking at uh, expert opinions when it's relevant, uh, looking at protocols, looking at our experiences in our own clinical context, and then we're taking that information and trying to evaluate its quality and uh, usefulness for answering our questions. Uh, once we've done that, we sort of take it and start synthesizing it and come up with possible procedures or protocols. And then we go and actually try and apply that procedure in clinical practice and then evaluate it to see whether or not it's working. Now, remember this is a cyclical process and evidence-based practice always should be. So no matter what we do, there's always ways that we can prove these processes. So the idea here is that our evaluation helps tell us what our new questions are or what our new problems are that we can uh, continually improve uh, these processes. So then we might go back to that start and continue through the process of, of improvement. All right, so how does evidence-based proct uh, proce practice processes work uh, in a little bit more of a detailed way? So uh, here we're talking about uh, finding a, uh, a topic, then forming a team, clinical practice councils, other groups that you might pull together to try and answer this. Um, and then start pulling evidence from the data, ranking that evidence, grading it, critiquing it um, based and looking at uh, current guidelines, uh, critiquing the, the different types of research based upon different types of criteria, and then pulling it together to actually create some recommendations about what to do. So in the work that you've been doing, you've actually addressed a lot of these different types of elements already, and you have a pretty good idea of these different types of steps. So, you know, when we think about this, we think about this very much as the steps in which we're pulling and pulling evidence and trying to understand what it implies for how we should improve practice. Now, what we know is that just showing up at a meeting and slapping down your pile of papers and saying, hey, the literature says we should do this or, you know, based upon a few different things, we, we should do this. Uh, in reality, that doesn't always... Uh, carry the day. So there's a lot of considerations that come into actually deciding that we're going to go forward with actually changing practice and we're going to pursue these types of endeavors. So it's uh, substantially more uh, complicated. Now, evidence is really important. Having that solid base is uh, provides you with a lot of leverage. It provides you with a lot of power, but it doesn't always, uh, it's, it helps you promote uh, evidence-based practice, but it isn't always going to be the answer that will always uh, lead you to the conclusion that this uh, change in practice will occur. So when we look at these types of efforts that occur, uh, sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And what we're really trying to do in the, the following set of lectures is to talk about why sometimes this works and why it doesn't, and to give you some tools to help improve your ability to work within a healthcare system to actually make those changes work as effectively as possible. All right, so for these lectures, for these sections, we're really gonna be talking a little bit about those later stages in the process. So first off, how do you actually make a decision that we're actually gonna take this evidence and change practice using it? Um, how do we plan to actually change that practice? Uh, if we're going, if we did, uh, based upon our plan, how do we actually go through the process of actually, actually making those changes? Um, what types of procedures might we, we, we do in that process? And then finally, um, how do we evaluate it? So uh, you would want to think about evaluation really from the beginning, because unless you get data at the beginning, 
uh, end at the end, you can't show that there's any change that's occurred based upon your new procedures or protocols, right? So evaluation is something that comes in throughout these stages of application. So it's very important to be thinking about this throughout that process. So we're going to be going into some of these different stages, but uh, the point that I'd just like to make is that uh, in those later application stages, we really move from talking um, a little bit more about the scientific elements of what does the data suggest about this to getting a little bit more into the politics of doing these types of things. So, uh, you know, to effectively engage in evidence-based practice, you actually have to consider the social context in which you're working and actually be smart and savvy about how you promote these types of efforts. Um, so, all right. So the the sort of cautionary tale here is that there are different ways that that things change. One, well, first off, things often don't change. They can just keep on churning away as they've been going on for for decades. Uh, if we don't actually make those uh, encourage change, but if you're get, if you're going to have change, they actually change in a bunch of different ways. It could be through an evident, evidentiary approach where we're using the evidence-based practice process, or it could be what we call more of an extemporaneous approach. So the evidentiary approach is what we normally think of as being ideal. So you, you gather empirical evidence, you think about the ethical considerations, you might involve the public, you might uh, you, you have some sort of decision-making process that integrates people in a more democratic way, and you decide we're gonna go, move forward with this, this practice change. The extemporaneous process, unfortunately, is very often how changes occur in healthcare. Um, this is where it's not really done based upon a strong evidence base, it's done more based upon different types of political pressure. Uh, and that could be advocacy groups, it could be commercial pressures of various sorts, advertising or uh, commercial entities. Uh, it could be new legal requirements that don't really, aren't necessarily based upon evidence. Or it could be uh, some professional organization pushing for or promoting something based upon the interest of that, of that profession. So, you know, these types of things, approaches are, uh, do occur uh, with some frequency. So a colleague of me told me about an example uh, from my own field where uh, in, uh, in New York State, uh, there was a coach of the Buffalo Bills, I believe, who uh, had a nephew who died of a rare genetic disorder. I think it was Gaucher disease. And basically, he just called up the governor of New York State. And within, I think, about a month, the, uh, the newborn screening practices for the genetic testing practices for the entire state were changed to test for Gaucher disease. So, um, you know, that's a situation where simply having those political connections led to pressures to change policy. Now, was that a good decision or not? Well, it may or may not have been, uh, uh, but it wasn't one that was really based upon the best evidence about whether or not adding this genetic test to this testing panel was the right decision, right? It didn't follow that evidentiary approach. It uh, uh, used more of that political extemporaneous approach. So when we're thinking about uh, making these decisions, it's in our real interest to promote and push for more of these evidentiary policy decisions. Uh, about how we're going to pursue healthcare. So, you know, that's just uh, an overall contextual idea here. You know, we're we're moving from focusing in on the evidence and what it's telling us to thinking a little bit more about how in a complex healthcare system with a lot of different competing interests, we actually can be successful about promoting evidence-based practice change. So thank you very much for listening and take care, everyone.